The synthesis and application of organic compounds, especially as they pertain to Alberta's petrochemical industry, is an important focus that Alberta education has applied to high school chemistry. Alberta's oil sands were used historically by the First Nation Cree people to cork birch bark vessels and canoes, or to burn in smudge pots for mosquito control. Even though the oil sands were known to early European explorers since 1719, attempts to extract the bitumen from the oil sands, also known as tar sands, were first accomplished successfully as late as 1967. It is only very recently, with the price of a barrel of oil where it is, that the expensive extraction of oil from Alberta's oil sands has become economically viable. Now, one in six Albertans are employed in some way by the energy sector. Alberta's oil sands deposits occupy an area twice as large as the province of New Brunswick, and in 2005, with only 2% of the area involved in production, the oil sands were producing almost a million barrels of bitumen oil a day. Bitumen oil has the consistency of cold molasses, thick and black, needing to be heated or mixed with naphtha before it can flow. It is a heavy crude oil. When processed, the product is synthetic crude oil. The largest producer of synthetic crude oil from the oil sands is Syncrude Canada Limited, located outside of Fort McMurray in the Athabasca oil sands. Syncrude is a joint venture involving Canadian oil sands, Imperial Oil, Petro-Canada, Nexon, ConocoPhillips, Mokul Energy Limited, and Murphy Oil. By 2015, Syncrude expects to extract up to 200 million barrels of oil per year. Most of the oils, gas, and oil sands produced in Alberta is refined and burned as fuel. 5% is used to synthesize petrochemicals, the basic hydrocarbon raw materials like ethene and propene that are used to make plastics and other synthetic materials. To make one barrel of crude oil requires 2,000 barrels of oil sands. If the oil sands are underground, the bitumen is mined in situ by injecting several barrels of steam heated by 40 million liters of natural gas to produce that one barrel of oil. As you can imagine, mining for oil in this way is not only very energy intensive, but also harmful to the environment, and has only been made possible by the world's increasing dependence on fossil fuels driving up its cost, making this kind of extraction technique financially feasible. Oil companies have spent millions of dollars to lessen the environmental impact of bitumen extraction. Reseeding of mined areas, called reclamation, takes many years and the ecosystem before the oil sands extraction will never be the same. Nevertheless, North America's fossil fuel demands are very high, and while being mindful of the importance of environmental preservation, the oil sands are vital to Alberta's economy now and for many years to come. Diverse employment opportunities and heavy investment in Alberta's non-renewable resource is expected to increase further over the coming decades. An understanding of the theories and applications of organic chemistry is essential as we navigate our way through this future. Half of an oil refinery's operating cost is in fractional distillation, the process of separating petroleum into its hydrocarbon components by cycles of heating, evaporating, cooling, and condensing. Large fractionating towers heat the petroleum to high temperatures. The boiling points and densities of the hydrocarbons increase with the size of the molecules. The crude oil goes in, is heated, and the hydrocarbons with the lowest boiling points vaporize first and rise up the tower and will condense last and collect at the top. Perforated plates covered with bubble caps permit vapors to pass through the condensed liquid which is then piped away for further treatment. So in summary, fractional distillation involves heating crude oil so it vaporizes. The larger hydrocarbons have higher boiling points and condense at lower levels of the fractionating tower. Smaller hydrocarbons vaporize first and condense last at the top of the fractionating tower. Cracking involves converting the less useful crude oil fractions into much needed petrochemicals. This requires breaking the carbon-carbon bonds which is done under high temperatures and pressures and frequently with chemical catalysts. Further fractional distillation occurs before the desired product is obtained. 
The ethene and propene products of cracking are industrially valuable, but only small amounts are found in crude oil. Hydrocracking adds hydrogen to the refinery process. The longer chain alkanes become shorter chain alkanes, providing low grade gasoline and heating oils. These products are usually upgraded by the process of reforming. The chemical catalysts used speed up the reaction process. Products can include styrene and eventually polystyrene plastics and foam. Another type of reforming is alkylation, where short chain alkenes are chemically joined under controlled heat and pressures with an acid catalyst to produce high octane gasoline for high performance engines and jet fuel. Finally, the residual unprocessed crude oil is ultimately extracted using extreme heat and solvents and sold for industrial purposes and power generation.